In this series on talks, current talks, I'll continue to speak on certain still unexplored aspects. Bliss, the byproduct of awakening. Bliss is byproduct of awakening. Misery too is a byproduct. So is bliss. Misery is a byproduct of being asleep or unconscious. Hence, you cannot seek and search for bliss directly. And those who seek and search for bliss directly are bound to fail. Bliss can only be attained by those who do not seek it directly. On the contrary, they seek awareness. And when awareness comes, bliss comes out of his own accord, just like your shadow, unshakable. When a person enters into male-female relation, and there is awakening, and with that awakening, there is a downward release of energy, and there is an upward release of energy. It cannot happen without awareness. And the Hindu scriptures speak of two words, Tejas and Ojas. Ojas means that light, the Noor. The, and that you can give it a name as bliss also. When that begins to flow, that is an upward movement, then there is a glow on the face. You are in a totally a different state of bliss. You are not seeking it, but you are only aware of the act that you are doing. When you are aware of the act, then automatically, spontaneously, it begins to happen. There are a few weapons that are used in Hindu mythology as the weapons of the Trinity. Trinity of Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh or Shiva. Shiva is embodiment of destruction or meditation, constantly in meditation. His weapon is of the shape of a trident. Trident with a stick and three arrows connected in a semicircular manner. The base is semicircular. According to Sufis, just as brain, the Brain has two aspects, left and right. One is masculine, the other is feminine. In the same way, there are different stages of Kalb, the heart center. Two on the either side, on the left nipples and the right nipple. Then two centers are above that and two are below and one in the center and the trident when you look at the shape it connects to all these kalp centers to the solar plexus or the life energy where you are connected to that reservoir of energy this is the state of meditativeness, a state of awakening. And when that happens, you are transcended into a state of meditativeness. You are involved in the acts, you are in the world, but the world and its dualities are not within you. This is known as Pashupati Ashtra or the weapon, it leads you into a state of meditativeness and as an outcome, bliss overflows in the form of ojas. Oj means that which is incandescent, 
which is bright like thousand suns. When you look at the faces of the sheikhs and master, there is a different kind of glow which is which is the shadow of inner bliss or the harmony that flows. Man is a combination of these two energies that flows one downward, the other upward. The downward is the outcome of the gravitational force. The upward movement of the energy is the outcome of grace. The second weapon is called Vishnu's disc or Sudarshan chakra. He invokes it on his index finger and hurls it at the disciple as the seeker. I am using the word seeker. At the person, enemy, who is to be slain in the normal terms of the war. What does it happen? This disc represents light. And when it is tremendous light, person dies as he is. He is transported into the other realm. He is no more a physical body. The physical body dies. Symbolically it represents the state of fana or dissolution. When that disc is hurled at you, it can never miss its target. It always goes, it is an intended like a missile. It has been directed for a specific purpose. It serves that purpose and comes back. It is the light that guides and after that the person begins to see which is beyond, beyond dualities. He comes to know his past actions that has been the cause of misery, that has been the cause of his bliss and beyond which he has to live his life. This is the second weapon or in the spiritual terminology these are the tools to bring about transformation. This represents the tawajjo, the energy field that the master sends towards the seeker and it brings about a transformation. Continuing on bliss, when you feel blissful, you are right, moving in exactly the way you should move. Bliss increases only when you are approaching closer and closer to that which is, we can call it God or by any other name. When the direction of your life begins to change, you are moving towards God, you will feel that bliss which is not in the ordinary sense as happiness. It can be given an example with a child. Child is blissful. It is not happy. It has not known anything. The child is blissful. It has not won any laurels. It has not gained anything. No money, no prestige, no respect, nothing. Yet still there is a kind of a happiness which represents innocence and it is so enamoring that it can captivate, it can affect anyone who looks at the smile of a child, the innocence. It is the outcome, the bliss is outcome of 
that awareness. If you are going away from God, anguish arises, you feel more and more frustrated, bored and miserable. Misery is an indication that you are going astray. It is a natural indication that you have lost track of the path, lost track of Hak, lost track of truth. Bliss simply says that you are falling in line with the whole, with totality, with all that is. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. We are part of this organic harmony. The plants, the rivers, everything is breathing, the existence, so you are. You are one with everything. Things are becoming harmonious. The garden of the beloved is coming closer and the air feels cooler. Winds bring the fragrance of the flowers, its fred its freshness and a new thrill and a new enthusiasm as well. Then you are moving towards the garden of the beloved. Maybe you cannot see it, but the direction is right. The vision is not clear as yet. Bliss is true happiness. Sufis use the word surur for it. And what you call happiness is just misery in disguise. What you call happiness is nothing but entertainment or pleasure. It is momentary. So it cannot be true. Truth has to have one essential quality and that quality is it is eternal. Hindus use the word sanatan that which is eternal. And body is not eternal because it comes into existence, goes through the process of change from birth to death, then it enters from one door of death and comes out from another door of life. Every moment something goes on changing within. Truth has the essential quality that is eternal. If something is true, it is eternal, and if it is untrue, it is momentary. Truth is eternal. It was in the beginning of the creation. It will be even after dissolution of the creation. Mirza Ghalib has said in one of his compositions, when there was nothing, still Khuda was there. And when there will be nothing, still Khuda will be there. It will be even after the solution of the creation. And even now it is. When something exists at three ends, it is eternal in nature. It cannot be destroyed. The light cannot be destroyed. Its form changes. It disappears in the unknown oblivion and comes back again. Someone asked Buddha, when you will die, where will you go? Buddha said, I have nowhere to go. That is why one of his name is Tathagat, thus came, thus gone. When you light a candle, where does the light comes from? It is there already, but it has become invisible to human eye. The moment a connection is established, the light comes in. And when you put off the candle, where does the flame go? It disappears, dissolves. Just as you are standing on the shore of the ocean, on the beach, you have a bottle of water. You throw that bottle of the water from the bottle into the ocean. Where that 
water goes it dissolves into the vastness of the ocean vastness of the river water true happiness is found only when mind completely ceases functioning when mind ceases functioning means it is not guided by the duality the right and wrong good and bad it transcends that it does not come from outside instead it wells up within your own being it starts overflowing you you become luminous you become ojas embodiment of ojas you become a fountain of bliss sometimes it happens that you become one in the rare moments watch the ocean the tremendous wilderness of it and suddenly you forget your split your schizophrenia you relax or moving in the mountains seeing the virgin snow on the mountain peak suddenly coolness surrounds you and you need not be false because there is no other human being to be false to you fall together or listening to the beautiful music you fall together you are in harmony with that whenever in whatever situation you become one a peace happiness and bliss surrounds you you feel fulfilled there is no need to wait for these moments these moments can become your natural life these contradictory moments can become the ordinary moments such ordinary ordinariness is the whole effort of zen to become the most ordinary do not wait for some great bliss to descend on you it never happens bliss is nothing but a small moments accumulated into your being the aggregate of all small moments is the embodiment of is the outcome of bliss eating enjoy it drinking enjoy it whatever you are doing if you begin to enjoy this is the first step you are transported in a different state taking a bath walking such is the beauty beautiful world such a beautiful world surrounds you a beautiful morning beautiful clouds surrounding then what else do you need to celebrate the sky is full of stars what more do you need to be prayerful the sun rising from the east what more do you need to bow down and emits a thousand and one thorns a small rose flower arises opening its bud so fragile so vulnerable yet so strong so ready to fight with the wind with the lightning with the thundering and everything else look at the courage of the flower what more do you need to understand trust flower symbolizes symbolizes the trust against all the oddities it is so fragile and yet still it is strong it is up to you to make whatever you want out of your life an enlightened consciousness makes even death blissful and an unenlightened consciousness makes even life ugly for an enlightened consciousness only bliss only beauty exists only bliss exists indeed bliss alone the bowels 
belong to the seventh type. Bowls is a group of people who sing and dance. This is a small group in eastern part of India known as Bowls. They go on singing, chanting and nothing else. Celebration, song, dance, ecstasy, this is their way. This is bliss. They make meditation tremendously joyful because a person can be meditative and can become sad. A person can be meditative and become very silent and may miss bliss. Because meditation can make you silent, absolutely still, but unless meditation becomes a dance or dance happens in it, something is missing. You are entering into meditation, singing and dancing. Peace is good, it is beautiful, but something is lacking in it. Certainly bliss is lacking. When peace starts dancing, it becomes bliss. When peace becomes active, overflowing, it is bliss. When bliss is enclosed in a seed form, it is peace. And when seed has sprouted, not only that, but the tree has blossomed and the flowers have started coming, the seed has become a full bloom, then it is a state of absolute absorption or samadhi. That is the highest type of religion. Accept your responsibility for misery and you will find that just hidden inside you are all the cause of bliss, freedom, joy, enlightenment and immortality. I am here available. If you are thirsty, move closer and soon you will know that light, that insight, that explosion of bliss in which there is no choice. Therefore, this light, this new, this awakening is choicelessness. But do not misunderstand. Before that, you have to move very cautiously, choosing the right against the wrong, choosing the true so that you can reach to the ultimate truth. And then it becomes your way, spontaneously. If a person can go into sorrow deeply, he will find all sorrow has evaporated. When going deep into anything means you are going with total acceptance, full of awareness. In that evaporation of sorrow is joy and bliss. Bliss has not to be found outside, against sorrow. Bliss has to be found deep, hidden behind the sorrow. You have to dig into your sorrowful states and you will find a spring of joy. Bliss is a taste, a feel and so overwhelming, so intense that once you have got it, you cannot believe how you have been missing it all along. I cannot figure it out because it is simply there. It was always there. How did I manage to miss it for so many lives? Once you get it, that is, once you get, that is the problem that arises. How have you been missing it all along? Bliss is just sitting at the very center of your being, ready to be remembered. You are not on the circumference. Buddha said, Buddha says never be worried about happiness or about bliss. 
just be do not talk about anything also do not talk about ultimate bliss because there is no need just know how not to cause suffering if suffering is not there the very absence of suffering is bliss because bliss is your intrinsic nature it is not something that comes from outside it has no counterpart to it that is the first thing to understand pleasure has the opposite to it pain happiness has unhappiness but bliss is nothing it does not have an opposite to it it is transcendence it is organic whole buddha used to say if you taste the ocean from anywhere it is salty so is the case with bliss you can taste it from any corner from any space from any direction it is just blissfulness there is nothing opposite to it it is the only experience in life which has no polar opposite to it that is why once you are blissful you cannot fall back once through your ordinary act the light and noor or bliss begins to overflow you have found the reservoir and it can never dry there is no way to be unblissful again i have tried but nothing succeeds never be bothered with the next moment or the next life or the next world make this moment whatever you are doing in that moment whether it is ordinary or extraordinary that does not matter make that moment a moment of bliss and the next will follow it and the next life the next world will follow and everything that you are this moment is going to become deepen more and more and when you see that you are responsible for your bliss your bliss will be far more when you see that nobody has given it to you that you have not been a beggar and it is not a gift from somebody else nobody has given it to you how can anybody take it away when you see this you have entered into a altogether different state of existence which is not of this earth you can call it is the other worldly or you are living in the domain of light in the domain of noor in the domain of beyond enlightenment when the disk of vishnu known as sudarshan chakra is hurled at the person the person dies as he is the physical body dies he enters into another realm the drop has become ocean now another life begins that is life beyond enlightenment so far you have been seeking bliss or happiness in life when you have you have been seeking happiness in this and that but always you was getting the opposite unhappiness but when you go beyond the two then you enter into the realm of bliss a new life begins a life of bliss a life of noor and there is a beauty of that you have nothing yet is still you are blissful yet is still you are thankful this is the life beyond 